Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome. My name is GBay99, and uh, I just took a shower. They, right now, it's 11 in the morning, uh, as you can tell with my wet hair. I just took a shower. Um, I just woken up after staying up till I think about like two in the morning watching the CLG documentary last night. Now, I want to make a video about it because it is a really big disappointment for me, and uh, I think there definitely is a place for historical videos and documentaries and uh, all sorts of videos like these in esports, and I don't want people to get, um, I don't, I don't want everyone to suddenly be shunning them, you know, um, when the next one comes out, if another one comes out. And I also want to give advice, give some constructive criticism, because there is a lot of things that they did wrong that could have been done better. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So there were three big problems that I have with this documentary. First, there was no um, backstory on CLG whatsoever. You don't get any understanding of why a documentary is being made about them. They only mention that they won WCG uh, 2010. It, it was like, there's like, I don't know, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes of footage of that. And, it, you know, that's, that, that's nice and all. And that was a really big moment uh, in their history. But there's a lot more history to CLG than them winning $5,000 back in 2010. If you guys remember IEM Cologne 2011, CLG went into that tournament with the mindset, if we don't take first here, it's not profitable for us to stay as a team anymore. And they were going to disband and CLG would be done with if they did not win um, IEM Cologne in Gamescom uh, in 2011. And they went in with a sub. They had to play with Salsi because GG was out somewhere. And they won. And that was a huge thing for them. That, that was a huge thing. <laughs> it, it, I remember watching the vlogs where Elements and St. Vicious every morning would have a breakfast of champions, Red Bull and vodka. And, uh, and then after they started losing tournaments, everyone said, you know, why you're losing? No breakfast of champions. And they even won the next tournament too. It, it was a big thing. It was a big deal for them. And that they get to just continue as a team. And CLG has a lot of rich history and they have just a lot of history in general a lot of things that went up and down throughout their uh throughout their League of Legends careers, even back in Season 1, back in the Season 1 Finals when they got first place in the Qualifiers Tournament, but because of a bracket switch, I had to play against Epic Gamer, the 8th seed, and then they ended up losing and getting dropped down into the lower bracket, and then eventually fought their way to make it to the Season 1 Finals in DreamHack. And th there's a lot of history to CLG that was just completely brushed over, some of it good and, uh, you know, some of it bad. But the big problem is we never get a reason to like CLG. It just immediately uh, jumps right in after a little brushing over um, the 2010 World Cyber Games. It just immediately jumps right into this slump that they've been in for the past year and a half, for the past two years, where they go into every tournament saying we're going to win and then they end up losing and then fighting and then replacing someone and then going into the next tournament saying they're going to win and then end up losing, fighting and replacing someone. The second problem I have with the CLG documentary is it is just not um, long enough. Uh, you know, CLG has a lot more history than what was shown, and it was just a really short, skimpy clips of interviews that were thrown together that don't really have that much coherence. It doesn't have much flow. It, it's just really, uh, I, and I think, you know, making it longer would... Um, would fix that. You know, it would in if they just included a lot more of the history of CLG, included a lot more interviews, included a lot more backstory on all the players, then it would just be better. It would just be better. Um, I watched a Frank Lloyd Wright documentary last week that was four hours long. It was in two parts. And I watched a Woody Allen documentary that was like three and a half hours long uh, a couple of weeks before that. You know, people watch documentaries because they want to see every little every little detail and outline in, uh, in a person's history, in a person's career, in a person's life, both professional and personal. In, uh, and they, <laughs> people are going to watch um, a lot. People are going to watch a lot of footage. Their attention spans are going to be a lot longer. And I understand, um, especially if this was coming from Machinima Versus, YouTube is based around, you know, trying to keep your audience's attention. And a lot of people don't make long videos. I've struggled with this before. You know, I don't have that many long videos because I don't want to lose people's attention. But with a documentary, you have to make a longer video. I'm, it was like 45 minutes long at most, maybe 30 minutes, uh, maybe 50. But it was really a, uh, 
it was really short and it really cut out a lot of stuff. You know, we don't see Loco Doco at all. We don't see any interviews from anyone who isn't currently a big powerhouse in CLG. Um, even Gigi, though. Gigi never had a single interview throughout the entire uh, video, or for throughout any of the videos, throughout the entire documentary. And he was a founder of CLG. That's a really bad thing. <laughs> and I, I can't believe uh, that... You know, it, it was really just skimpy in every department, and it was really, really short. You don't have to shy away from making long documentaries, Mission of Versus, or CLG, or whoever's uh, decision this was. Um, if we're watching a documentary, we want to see every little detail of that person's career, of that person's history, and we'll watch a l decent amount of footage than uh, you give us credit for. Finally, though, there is absolutely no flow throughout the entire uh, documentary whatsoever. Um, the storytelling isn't really that good at all. Um, it's just a bunch of very choppy interviews layered one after the next. And even visually, it isn't really that interesting to see. At one moment, you might see Doublelift giving an interview in Korea. Then the next moment, it cuts to Kelby in the Machinima vs. Studios current day. And then it cuts to Kelby in the CLG gaming house, you know, clearly shifting all over the spectrum in terms of, you know, what date is it. Um, and it's just not very well paced. It's not very well paced at all. It, it again, it, you know, it completely skips over the majority of CLG's history pre, pre even 2012, and it just ends up with a really scatterbrained thing. You know, it's it just seems very choppy and there's no flow and it's you know I'm rambling at this point, but it really is a big deal. And then of course there's a ton of little flaws. Like again, we never see Loco Doco, we never see um interviews from Kobe or uh Saint Vicious, which would be very interesting to, you know, hear their uh experiences on CLG, hear their experiences in the documentary. We never see any of that and uh and it's really just a big disappointment um, compared to the trailers, that, uh, especially compared to the trailers. If you go back and watch them, especially the ones uh, where, you know, Machinima Versus wasn't necessarily, I don't think they were involved back then, um, it was very interesting to see some of those, and uh, they looked... <laughs> It looked a lot better than the final product, sadly. Again, I'm not really making this video to discourage people from making documentaries or to, you know, criticize CLG for their documentary. I do want to provide some constructive criticism, and I want to make sure that anyone in the future um, knows what CLG did wrong, um, especially since I think in StarCraft II, a similar thing happened with the Team Liquid documentary, Liquid Rising. Um, I'm assuming it's Team Liquid because it's Liquid Rising. Um, I never, I never ended up getting to see it, but a lot of people said a very similar thing happened there, and uh, hopefully this doesn't happen a third time. Hopefully it doesn't take three times for us to learn a lesson. There is a lot of rich history throughout esports. Whether you're watching the Day 9 100th Daily, where he's talking about his history, which is just an emotional roller coaster of incredibly interesting things. Or you're talking about 2009 World Cyber Games Counter-Strike Finals that goes into four overtimes and goes down to the final second, um, you know, where it can go either way at the final second. There's a ton of excitement and tension throughout all of esports, and it's not being captured well at all through documentaries like this. And it definitely... Um, it definitely can be. I guess that's what I'm trying to get uh, the point across. It definitely can have a... Uh, there definitely is a spot for people revisiting this incredible, tense, exciting history, but it's not being done properly. And I hope if someone tries to do this again, that it can be done a little bit better. Anyway, um, sorry. Uh, for this video. It might seem a, bit, a little bit off topic. I do have some League of Legends content coming out soon. A lot of you have been harping on these vlogs saying go back to doing gameplay videos, but uh, you know these vlogs are a lot easier for me and they're actually um, a little bit more fun too, a little bit more less stressful at least, and uh, it's an enjoyable making them. Nevertheless though, I do have some uh, some gameplay coming out soon. You can definitely, I, I think you'll all like it. It's a little bit different. This next video is a little bit different than what I normally do. And of course, I'll have a 100,000 subscriber vlog video coming out uh, whenever I hit 100,000 subscribers. So I hope you're all looking forward to that. I'll get some gameplay videos out for you guys soon. Um, until then, though, thank you very much for watching. Good luck in solo queue, and have a wonderful day.